MJF comes out for a speech. He's got his whole uh, uh, cabinet, I guess, this, this crew is. He interrupts his own speech to tell Nina to smile, and then has Nina present the polling numbers. The polling numbers have MJF leading Moxley 500% to minus 1,000%. He says Clearly, he also went to Bothell High. Yeah, uh, he fired the gum guy. He needs to fire his math guy. That's also true. So he says, I'm I'm here tonight. I always will be. Dictator John is not here. He's afraid of change. And to be honest, he's afraid of me. He's not used to dealing with a pro wrestler who won't look up at the lights for him. So I will make you comfortable, John. And he has his geeks carry the podium away. He lies down in the middle of the ring, looking up at the ceiling. They got a camera up there looking down at him. He says, this company needs leadership. You're not a leader. You're a dog chasing cars. You wouldn't know what to do if you caught one. Quoting the Dark Knight there. He says, but you, you did catch one, John. You caught that AEW world title pretty platinum, he calls it. But you don't know what to do with it. You should fork over the keys. Fork the keys over to someone who's better than you. And you know it. And he finishes his speech. He's all happy and proud. Moxley's music starts to play. He panics immediately. He's got Wardlow out there and like six other dudes. He's panicking. He always comes to the stairs. Go to the vomms. Go to the vomms. Taz has to point out that in this arena, <laughs> in the structure of this arena, parts of it are called the vomms after the vomitorium structure. That's what part of the arena is. That's where he comes from. So, of course, all of MJF's goofs hit the stands, and Moxley just comes out of the tunnel, complete destru destruction, hits with a paradigm shift, lays him out, goes backstage for a promo. He says they're not even, not after how MGF tried to cost him the title last week. They won't be even until September 5th at All Out, when he teaches MGF a painful lesson in humility. This will be a very bitter pill for you to swallow. And they go back to the ring. MGF is on the verge of tears, complaining about his neck. His crew is there tending to him now. He can, can't get to his feet. I don't have enough positive words to say about this promo and this segment from start to finish, except that MJF is a perfect pro wrestler. He is perfect. Do you understand? Perfect. You know what's amazing is is my daughter is four and a half, and you know there's part of me that I can't even remember a time before she was around, unless I watch shit like how Shoulders Torelli became Big Vinny V. But in other ways, it's like shit. just the blink of an eye. Like she's already almost five. Like, it's just like a blink of an eye. And I mean this in the nicest way possible, but she knows nothing about anything. She's four and a half. <laughs> okay. MJF is, like, four and a half times older than she is. Something like that. Which, when, yes. I, when I think about it, it's like, how the fuck does this guy get all this shit at this age? You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, born actually. in fucking 1996 or whatever. Yeah. It's like, you shouldn't know shit about anything, buddy. <laughs> no. But, like, he's smarter than, like, a, I mean, if you don't want to talk about people I've met in this business. But anyway, a lot. Smarter than a lot of people who've been doing this for much longer. Yes. You would think that, you know, someone growing up and... You know, they started watching wrestling in, what, the fucking 2000s? And then wrestling becomes such shit, and people romanticize about the Attitude Era. And yeah. so you're watching tapes of this shit in the Attitude Era. I mean, you'd think you'd grow up and just be a fucking idiot. A pro wrestling idiot. That's but a he's point. Like, I don't like to throw around the term genius. I, I will not throw that term around. But he's, he's, he's incredibly intelligent in terms of he's pro a, wrestling. He is a student. And the thing, the thing that is most amazing to me is... He already fully understands, more so than, like, some of the biggest stars of the Attitude Era, I might add. Yes. What it means to be a heel. Mm -hmm. It's not about being cool. Oh, God, it's no. It's not about being smarter than the baby faces. It's not about getting yourself over. He does get himself over. I mean, the guy is fucking over. But, like... He gets humiliated. He gets outsmarted. He's a fucking dumb shit. He gets he gets hit with this this DDT and he doesn't jump up and and laugh it off or get mad or get furious. He's fucking crying on the mat and holding his neck. Everything about this. He was a perfect heel. Yes. Perfect. I just love this fucking segment. 
He talks the biggest game you ever saw, but as soon as there's a chance of an actual real fight, he sends his cronies to do the dirty work for him. He sends them the wrong way. He sends them the wrong the, way. The he, baby face is smarter. Because he's a buffoon. I mean, it's, it's like, it's perfect. <laughs> it's fucking perfect. I, I may weep. This is so awesome.